Hello friends, welcome back to CCSP Certified Channel. Today I am covering compliance and legal risk. That is a last topic in the risk in the cloud of topic 4. And if you are following my channel, you might be aware that I have, I have already covered encryption, identity access management and the cloud characteristics in first three topics. And this topic, uh, I'm covering the risk in the cloud. So I have cover, covered almost 50% of your syllabus of the CCSP exam. And what is my focus in this video series? Uh, as I cleared exam in the last year in 2022, I started drafting these videos for my students and friends. And my focus to cover high probability exam topics in this video series and difficult exam concept because uh, soundness of concepts is very important to clear any IC square exam, especially CCSP. Also, I do conduct regular batches also. So I collect the sources of, of the questions from my exam, uh, my exam candidates, CCSP question bank, sample question banks. And based on this, I try to cover this in my video series. And to the point discussion is my focus in this video series. My goal is to help you get further faster in your CCSP exam certification. So I hope I have succeeded so far in this one. Few of my students has clear by watching videos also. So thank you for following me. I just cover a quick piece of mind activity before I jump to the topic of the day. So if you interested to write any of the IC score exam, whether it is CISSP, CCSP, SSCP, always go with the peace of mind offer. So the time you might be watching this video, the dates might be changed, but offer will remain in the peace of mind name and the URL will be same. I will post the URL in the video description. So current offer is that if you purchase voucher by 30th of June, you can get a free first free att attempt by 31st July. In case you don't qualify in the first attempt, you still have a second free attempt by September 15. So it you it give an additional attempt and you go with the relaxed mind in exam and majority of the time you clear in the exam in the first attempt only. Same way I did and many of my students have done a clear exam in the first attempt. You can see their feedback in the LinkedIn profile. I will share my LinkedIn URL also uh, in the video description. In case you are still not able to qualify, you still get a fair idea of the exam your weaknesses and it's always better to go with this one because it's a cost costlier exam around 700 dollars is the fees of exam of ccsp apart from this i conduct uh, regular batches also and they are not uh, every month but next month which i'm starting to harvest the next offer that will come in the month of august so for that if you are interested to go with the dedicated classes classroom studies you can go with that it is a morning batch i'm starting from 10th july onward it will be 25 classes go will go till 28th of august four days a week for working professional uh, it is for I'm i will share the classroom recording also it is 8 a.m to 9 15 a.m ist and what i focus more on those those areas those requires memorizations i follow the proven le learning method those those has worked for me and may follow, follow by my candidate also and that helps so classroom studies will be in quick way you can complete the whole syllabus in very short duration because the exam uh, syllabus is quite vast so my focus in this classroom studies to cover all this in a 25 classes and most important way and the most better way and definitely it is not necessary that you only go with the classroom methods only. You can go with my recordings, video, YouTube channels also. This also fine. Any of the mode you follow that will be helpful. You can write me at the CCSP certified gmail.com also in case you need any help in the exam preparation. Apart from this, uh, this classroom recordings also I'm uploading in my YouTube, uh, in my YouTube channel. That is a private YouTube channel. You can get the access of this recording also with the nominal fees. Along with these recordings, I share my PPT content that I have prepared with the various sources and uh, and the question banks that I have collected from the various sources that I mentioned in the starting slide also. This all you can go, uh, whether go with the YouTube channel 
or classroom or online video recordings any of these methods helpful to you you can go with that methods now we come to the risk in the cloud we have already covered in the first six topics that cloud computing has several several benefits but it is two side of the coins you, one side give the scalability flexibility and the cost effectiveness but however if organization does not aware about the risk in the cloud and they cannot implement the appropriate security measurement it is they may have a high damage on their business reputation data legal all this so we have seen the virtualization data risk vendor locking malicious insider and privileged account management we claim risk so far today we'll cover the compliance audit and legal risk there's a last risk and definitely it is not the only list of the risk if you read about the notorious 9 nisa 8 teacher s12 list is beyond this so i will cover a lecture one more lectures to cover the remaining risk mentioned in this three uh, uh, organizations criteria but the important are this for exam perspective or the real life also which i have mentioned so i will i discuss quickly about the compliance audit and legal risk in this video so three concepts will cover in today's lecture one is a different type of roles in the cloud what is loss of governance and compliance risk and third is what is the safeguard against that so let's discuss about different type of roles in the cloud data owner data controller custodian processor auditors so data subject and data owner is the first role that we'll discuss it is an individual or entity whose data is being taken that is a data owner data controller custodian is a person who is responsible to process or control the data who has authority and that determine the purpose for which reason it is being taken the process is is anyone who process the data on behalf of the controller we'll see some example also here and the regulatory auditors are third party organizations that verify SLS compliance like audit SOX they are the government requirements so they take care about this they are the auditors and regulators there are other roles also but those are not very important these four roles are very very important for exam perspective and i just give a brief example that will help you to understand this role so let's say company like flipkart which sells cloth take personal data online to fulfill your orders like what is your length weight sex all these details they collect from you they use any cloud service provider like google cloud aws cloud oracle cloud all any of this cloud to host their website or application and then they use online payment partners like paytm phone pay google pay to process their transaction so in that case if they are taking my data the i am the data subject and data owner because i am i'm sharing my data to the flipkart and flipkart is the one who is the data controller here in this case or custodian both csp and the payment pay partners are the data processors so they are the one who process the data on request or behalf of the uh, csp so the ultimate uh, 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 the person or the company is the data controller company is the flipkart the one who collect the data from the customer now when if you uh, will cover the other uh, different countries laws also but if you are aware let's say gdpr has a mandatory uh, data reporting is at uh, 72 hours when the data breach happens and uh, it is for european customer uh, gdpr is a gdpr is a european customer laws same way hipaa is a health patient data uh, uh, privacy laws by us and there are various laws by different companies so they have a mandatory reporting or the uh, responsibilities and who is responsible legally in case some data breach happens data loss happens some uh, thefts happens so who is responsible legally there's a very important question being asked in the cccp exam again and again that who is responsible in case of the data loss data breach happens when there are multiple parties are there we have seen that we have a uh, data processor also there we have regulator auditors data owners the ultimate responsibility is always and always data controller or custodian in case of the data breach or loss happens any penalties being imposed legally to the data controller or custodian only so in that case if the if the flipkart sells uh, 
close in the Europe European market, let's say London. If the any data loss happens on the uh, citizens of the Londons or the European customers, then uh, whether it is done by CSP, when it is done by payment partner like Phone Pay, Google Pay, legal responsibilities lies with the Flipkart only. They have to report this incident within 72 hours to the GDPR authorities and they may face penalties of 4% of their global revenues up to 4% of their global revenues. So we'll cover the all international laws, data laws uh, in the next topic 5. But you just understand that this question being asked at least multiple times in the exam and they will show one simple question in this slide also that who is responsible and this always the data breach or uh, data also happens a data controller and you might have seen this movie Mujhse Shadi Karogi very funny movie Nahi dekha hai ta dekhiye in that case uh, whenever um, anything wrong happens with the heroine father uh, the Colonel Saab it is always a Salman Khan so who is the responsible always the Salman Khan was the responsible in the whole movie and uh, the way I have mentioned here to show that always remember there may be multiple parties involved but the ultimate per personal responsibility lies with the data controller or custodian in the cloud now uh, let's say I am the responsible but I don't have proper control because cloud nature is a very different one so what is first risk in the cloud we we are going to discuss the risk in the cloud, the loss of governance, compliance and audit risk in the cloud. So what is loss of governance? So even though I am a uh, responsible, but I have a very limited control in the cloud. My uh, CSP may not provide me the port scanning service, vulnerability assessment, penetration testing, because those are prohibited and the CSP services are shared against various customers. Same way there may be conflict between the my hardening process, customer hardening process and the cloud environment because cloud environment is general product available for everyone. They may not follow the my hardening process, my security policies. There may be SLA commitment, but SLA commitment mentioned that my services should be up and running but it will not give the safeguard meet the security defense whether my data or my uh, uh, applications or everything is secure that cannot give the SLS commitment cannot give the, those guarantees same way CSP sometimes outsource or subcontract other vendors we have seen the different type of vendors CSP has in previous videos also in the same uh, topic for uh, I think lecture 3 lecture 4 we have seen that so CSP has to do subcontract with other uh, third parties to run the business because CSP cannot run anything everything from their end like McDonald cannot uh, do everything from end they, have, they need staffing also they need vendors to deliver the uh, bread and uh, potatoes others so that's why they are I, every every business is depend on the other contractors and they may not follow the same privacy security laws that csp is doing csp might be sharing the data intentionally unintentionally to them to process the data and they may do some data breach data loss even those cases also the ultimate response is controller so someone intentionally unintentionally do a data loss data breach at the csp level the responsibility lies with the data controller only the compliance risk also there even uh, even there are some audit happens they are requirement to perform some uh, audit like pci dss gdpr hipaa also has a requirement to have a mandatory reporting to do the some audits it is not possible because the cloud infrastructure is often located at the housing facilities and individual tenants may not be in position to physically inspect and audit data centers when uh, many many organizations which doing business in different type of countries different type of industries is a different type of requirement of audit and csp either cannot provide the evidence this is required or will not permit any audit that is required to the cloud consumer and there are some e-discovery notice forensic and audit requirement is there which will cover a one more lecture after this lecture 8 in the topic for only which is very important for exam perspective what is e-discovery notice what is forensic but this also uh, has a re requirement to perform a audit or the evidence collections from the CSP side and which is not provided by CSP or granted by the CSP in the many of the cases 
then what is the safeguard of the data controller let's say csp is not providing all this de detail you are the one who is responsible and uh, let's say a data breach happens and csp is aware but they did not inform you within 72 hours let's say they informed you after a week this is a question being asked recently in the ccsp exam also that let's say you have a european customer data and you are compliant with the gdpr there is a mandatory requirement to report within 72 hours but your csp reporting you after a week what is your safeguard so what you can do so definitely you uh, if any legal penalties happens it will be against you then you can bypass this in the we are the contract language so there will be a strong contract signed between you and csp first even they in that case they spoiled this they have to bear the financial losses or the damages happens due to this type of negligences so a strong contract language is one of the safeguard in all such cases it should be transparent and provide assurance and the definitely financial damage that happens should be can be bypassed to the csp and it also helps reduce vendor locking because we have seen the vendor locking scenarios in the uh, lecture two of the topic four that vendor locking is one of the situation and the risk in the cloud where you cannot leave the vendor and and definitely strong contract language helps in that case also apart from this there is a privacy level agreement pla you can sign and uh, like let's say there is a facebook google they are companies are fa facing very privacy uh, level um, uh, penalties then you can file this pla with the uh, us csp that how your data, personal data will be placed in the csp and what is a uh, clear and effective way to communicate the if there is a uh, personal data breach happens how effectively they can uh, communicate back to us like if the data loss happens of the gdpr cases how effectively they can communicate it back you can write a privacy level agreement and and it can work as a tool to access the level of service provider compliance with the data protection legislation requirement and best practices so you might be in the cloud and credit card industry you see you are compliant with the pci dss or if you are working in the euro in the healthcare industry you are compliant with the hipaa then you can this pla can may, can have a assurance that your csp csp understand your requirement of the compliance and the best practices they should be followed so hope this is clear to you it's very important exam perspective you understand that this type of risk in the cloud and uh, and uh, who is responsible also should be aware you should be aware about this and the safeguard against them so we'll cover the five questions that we cover in after every lecture so first one who will determine whether your organization's cloud migration is satisfactory from the compliance perspectives whether the the cloud solution you have moved you are compliant or not or whether it is satisfactory from the compliant perspective who will determine who will check so we have seen the different roles uh, that data owner customers and uh, csps controllers we have seen the regulators also regulators are one or auditors are one who conduct the audit they they verify the slas and the the your safeguard requirement like you have a requirement for the mandatory reporting in the 72 hours you have a requirement to follow some encryption mechanisms to store the data all this can be done by regulator you have a SOX requirement for the way you are doing the business so all the regulator auditors will help in the satisfaction or help in to identify whether the cloud migration you have done is satisfactory or not the next one which of the following contact term most intensifies the cloud provider to meet the requirement listed in the service level agreement in the service level agreement which what motivate csp to follow that uh, and uh, provide the uh, requirement so if you see all these options definitely regulate oversight performance details desire to maintain customer satisfaction this all definitely csp will try to uh, use uh, to maintain the sls but the main motivation or main the reason is the financial penalties in case you don't follow the uh, norms decided in the sla there are final financial penalties that defined in the context will be applicable to you and that's why context should be very proper and decide in case 
csp do not follow all this what is the safeguard what is the penalties defined next one very important question this type of question comes when working with the privacy and data protection to what entities are all liability assigned who is all liable and definitely we have seen that and if you read all this question you will get confused because they are processor role controller role but we have seen that all liabilities are assigned to the controller there is no role of the processor customer user and they and based on the countries which decide the laws whether it is a gdpr hipaa so all liabilities are assigned to the fully responsible is the controller and this type of questions they ask again and again by modifying the language but don't can confuse whether it's a mistake of your or mistake of someone else even the mistake of any csp mistake of oracle google cloud mistake of your payment partner you are the responsible one who is collecting the data from the customer which of the, which of these does the cloud customer need to ensure protection of the intellectual property created in the cloud so this we haven't covered in our this video lecture but the purpose of right having this question is to use some common sense in such type of questions if you are having any data let's say you you are uploading any movie you are uploading any content the pdf content those are intellectual property right content what is the save what is the safeguard way or what is the best way to protect in the cloud so definitely drm im solution helping them cryptography helping a lot in that case because unauthorized access is limit restricted same way but the ultimate option is a strong contract clause because in if they in any option this comes this should give the priorities above any other options the reason i have kept this one you will see all this type of question the ccsp question being also exam also if there is a strong contract clause is mentioned one of the option always go with that if it is lies with the question so if you whether you are protecting your intellectual property rights whether you are protecting your data whether you are protecting your uh, sls or anything if it is mentioned there is strong contract clause as a option go with that option because favorable contract language always support you to protect your data in the cloud even though you have implemented drm irm cryptography there can be a malicious insider who can do and uh, can do misuse uh, his power and can do wrong with your business or data and we have seen the malicious insider in this topic for risk in the cloud is very important and most severe risk in the cloud so always a favorable contact language help you always draft that language the last question is you are the sme for a organization considering considering a transition from a traditional it enterprise environment to the hosted cloud provider data center one of the challenge you are facing is whether the cloud provider will able to comply with the existing legislative and the contractual framework your organization is required to follow this is a issue of what so whether your csp will able to provide the services or requirement that you have legal requirement or contractual requirement and the, it is a which type of issue it is a resiliency privacy performance and regulatory definitely is very clear it is a regulatory issue it is your regulatory requirement that must be met when you select the csp so it is a, uh, so definitely cloud is a very beautiful service but you have to understand the different type of risk in the cloud and you have to design or select the cloud based on the, your requirement and need it is not that cloud is fit for everyone it is not a single solution for every business many business select hybrid model or even remain the own cloud on premise because of the risk in the cloud this for today hope this lecture is informative to you if you like follow my channel and comment in case you need more video lectures to be given on a specific topic i will use i will uh, make next uh, videos in that those topics only thank you thank you so much